Geneforge is one of the best RPGs I've ever played. It has no necromancy, but it is a minions game, and the way the minions are implemented is very good. One of my favourite things about it is the lore and story. You are a shaper, a race of people who have learned how to build life forms to do work for them. If you look at how in the real world we use machines to do all of our work for us, shapers use life forms to do this kind of work instead. The shapers have developed some very strict rules about creation to avoid disasters. Servant creatures cannot learn magic and mustn't be created with too much intelligence. They must also obey every command given to them by a shaper. Any creature that rebels against shaper control or breaks any of their rules is branded as a rogue creation. Rogue creations are to be immediately destroyed. One of the shaper's most common creations are called serviles. They're almost like humans, but they're less intelligent and generally inferior. The story features serviles that have been abandoned by the shapers on an island. To the shapers, they are nothing more than tools, and leaving them there is no different than leaving behind a shovel. The serviles abandoned there have broken up into different factions since the shapers left. One group wishes to remain faithful and obedient to the shapers, so they won't be punished when the shapers return. Another has denounced the Shapers for abandoning them and have begun preparing to destroy them with great hatred. The last group wants to be seen as equals by the Shapers and to be respected as their own servile nation. As a Shaper, you have to navigate your way around these factions while also uncovering the terrible secret that caused the Shapers to abandon the island in the first place. You can choose to side with one of the factions if you want to, but you can also choose to side with none of them. It's completely up to you. There's also other hostile human factions on the island who want to uncover the secret and use it against the Shapers. It's been about four years since I played and finished Gene Forge 1. It took me 63 hours for one playthrough, and I've started playing Gene Forge 2 now. I'm about 15 hours into it. There's five Gene Forge games in the series, and there's a lot of content to experience. Anyway, it's time to discuss the minion mechanics of this game. The footage you're seeing now is from Geneforge 2. There are some minor differences between Geneforge 1 and Geneforge 2, but the gameplay mechanics are mostly the same. How it works is you have an essence pool, and its size is determined by your intelligence attribute. It functions like mana, and it's used to power spells and sustain creations. When you create a minion, it will reserve some of this mana to sustain its existence. You can also invest additional essence into the creature you're creating to boost its attributes. Strength is how much melee damage a creature can deal. Dexterity is about hit chance, dodging, and initiative. Endurance increases the hit points and resilience of the creature. And intelligence increases the creation's mental fortitude, and it also allows you to control the creature directly in combat if you raise its intelligence to 2. If the creature's intelligence is below 2, it will act in its own in combat and may do stupid things. Intelligence is a very important attribute for any creature, especially later on, because a dumb creature is much more likely to be mentally broken by the stress of combat and turn rogue. I've died so many times after a creation takes a big hit, then goes rogue and strikes me down. An intelligent creation is more likely to keep its cool in combat. At worst it will flee combat, but it's very unlikely to go hostile on you. The beauty of this system is it lets you go for quantity, quality, or anything in between. I find different situations cool for different minions. There are times where you want a couple of very good ones, but there's also many times where you need a swarm of dumb ones. One situation where I needed a swarm of low quality minions was when I was fighting exploding roamers. These roamers would explode when killed, dealing severe damage. The solution for me was to make a large swarm of low quality artillas. Artillas are large grubs that spit acid. Inevitably, a few of these artillas would be blown up, but because I had so many, and they weren't worth much individually, losing them didn't matter. In a different situation, I was fighting a group of flesh. These flish use powerful mental attacks, and one shot would fry the brain of a low-quality minion and send it rogue. In this situation, I made two large claw bugs and upgraded their stats as high as possible. This allowed the minions to shrug off enough attacks 
to close in and dispatch the Vlish in a single attack. This strategy didn't work against the exploding Romas. The high quality claw bugs just got surrounded and then blown to smithereens. I really like how the challenges in this game keep you on your toes. You always need to be making different kinds of minions. It's quite strategic. There's a lot of different minion types you can make. The first one you get is the Fiora. It's a little dinosaur looking fella who can spit fire but also bite. It's versatile and does well in most situations. Then there's the Tard, which is a big dumb brute. He's good at smashing things and bad at everything else. Because of the Tard's very low intelligence, I find he's the most dangerous minion to have on your side. It's happened to me so many times that a Tard has taken a big hit from a ranged enemy, and then he goes rogue, hits me, and I die. You gotta be careful with these utter imbeciles, but they do fight well. Just keep them far away from you. Attila is one of my favorite minions. They're large grubs that spit acid. The acid attack applies a damage over time effect, which also stacks. So if you have a group of Attilas and they all spit on an enemy, chances are that enemy will take massive damage the next turn and die. The Attila also has a pretty strong bite. Its main weakness is its low hit points and physical fragility. Consider these guys as glass cannons. After him you've got the Clawbug, which is a large and powerful scorpion. The Clawbug hits like a truck and can also apply a poison effect to enemies with its stinger. It's a lot better than a Tard and also a lot less likely to break and go rogue on you, but it's also expensive. You can also make Romas, which look a bit like large dogs. They spit acid like an Attila, but are more formidable in physical combat. They're quite nice minions. There's a bunch of other minions in the game that I can't show you because I haven't progressed far enough to the Gene Forge 2 yet, but I remember them from Gene Forge 1 years ago. There's the Vlish, which is like a large floating squid. It's a bit like a spellcaster minion. It shoots poison attacks at enemies and also applies a mental debuff to them. There's a few different types of Vlish, like the Terra Vlish, which can send enemies insane in battle and cause them to attack their friends. I can't remember all the types of fish, but they're good minions. There's also the Battle Alpha and the Battle Beta. These are huge humanoids built for destruction, kind of like giant tards, but a lot better. I think the Alpha one is red and the Beta one is blue. The blue one is larger and stronger than the red one. Beyond these basic types, there's also more advanced minions of the same type that you can unlock. I remember having dark green Attilas that were insanely good. Ancient Attilas, I think they were called. I also remember having an improved blue Fiora minion, as well as a ghostly Tard that was really hard for enemies to hit. So in other words, you can get stronger versions of the old minions. I'm going to give the Gene Forge games a perfect score. The minion mechanics are wonderful, and you have a brilliant RPG here. The minions are plentiful. There's a limit of eight, but you wouldn't really want more than eight in this game. So it's perfectly fine. The minions are all useful and permanent, and the way you craft them and you can fine tune their attributes is also really great. You can also rename your minions if you want to. But there's a few reasons why you might not want this game. The first is that Gene Forge is an older game from 2001, and it can run badly on modern systems. The good news is you can mostly fix it. As I understand it, the problem is that direct draw emulation is disabled on later Windows versions like Windows 10. This causes certain menus and dialogues, as well as some areas in the game, to be very sluggish. If you encounter this problem, you can follow these steps and the lag will be mostly fixed. I followed the steps and I was able to get rid of most of the lag. It still lags a bit here and there, but it's not driving me nuts anymore. The second reason is just that it's kind of an indie game. Some of the sound effects can be quite jarring, I get annoyed by the harsh sounds when you create a minion, for example. Have a listen. You might also not like the assets the game uses. I personally think it looks very good, and if you're interested, there's an entire article written by Spiderweb Software which explains why they use the assets they do. It's a pretty interesting read. It makes a lot of sense, actually. Thanks for watching. I hope this video has helped you find another cool minions game to play. I've got more videos on minions games and necromancy stuff coming soon.